process this is one of them um, so uh, this is this is a, an important stage that we've undertaken here which is a, an opportunity for you to contribute towards the design of uh, the city now um, there's the agenda 
there are the timings. Um, what I'd like to be able to do is get to the feedback session, uh, take 30 minutes, work back, take 40 minutes, I found last time we needed a little bit longer, but let's work on the principle and finish at 9 o'clock this evening at latest. And I think that, that's, that's the process that we want to adopt today, uh, so we can all get home and um, be alive. So, um, if I'm, sorry. You know, sorry, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, didn't have that last time. Really. Yes, uh, right, so just remind everybody again what the comprehensive, um, uh, what the initial objectives are, and those are the ones that we've listed. And so tonight, when we come to look at the, um, the options on the table, these are the objectives that we must consider all the time. And as you can see, they do, they do stem around the um, sustainable means of travel, which is again the priority of our city. And um, how we can improve journey times, reliability, and um, how we can reduce general traffic levels. All the time, those are the fundamental principles, the guiding principles of what we're trying to do in City Deal. So, I won't dwell too much. Um, so, we've got some presentations tonight. Um, I'd rather, if we could, uh, if we could get the presentations out of the way, and then if there's any particular questions, raise them at the end of the presentation so that we can move things along tonight to get to the point where we need to, which is where your input is required. I hope that's all right. Thank you. Right, who's the first one? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Glenn Hughes from WSPPB. I'm, I'm going to stand here, but if I'm in the way, let me know. I'm just trying to see this so I don't have to keep turning around. Um, so, so my set of slides are really just to, um, to give you some examples to give you a bit of food for thought on some of the design um, details, different ways of looking at some of the design details. And what I'm going to cover for this first half of the route are design details, examples that relate to these three things here. Side road junction <coughs> treatment, um, how you deal with the environment around bus stops, and different types of crossings. And we will cover some of the other points. So firstly, side road junctions. Now, <coughs> So all side roads, we're, so far on the current designs, we've shown a, a, a typical common uh, design, which is um, raised entries. So this is, uh, this is not typical. This is an example of the scheme in Brixton, which uh, you've seen these before. They're quite common now. So it's a, it's a raised um, area at the side, uh, the side road entrance. But this is just showing how things are done a bit different using different materials as part of a area-wide um, scheme for Brixton. Now, that particular scheme didn't have a cycle lane running in front of it, but these two do. So this is um, in Bournemouth and another one in, in um, Brighton. Um, so they're, they're more similar to what we're uh, showing, at least on this part of the route, where the uh, race cycleway runs past the junction. So the features of these two, typical features, uh, both of them have this tightened uh, uh, curb radii, and the reason for that is to discourage drivers going into and out of the side roads um, to go too fast. So it hopefully manages their speeds. It also, because the junction is tightened up, it reduces the crossing distance, and because it's raised, it has that raised level, that level profile for crossing the road. Um, also, because the uh, cycle lane is going in front of the junction, there, there are, is usually the use of some kind of in indication uh, to drivers and cyclists are going across it. And the top example is this continuous curve, albeit it's level with the carriageway. Um, you can see uh, just there. And one at the bottom, we've got these cycle logos that, that run across the road there. <coughs> so that's one way of doing it. Another way is, is something that's a bit more contemporary, you don't see many of these. Um, it's called um, a Copenhagen crossing or a continuous crossing. So this is where the um, Priority is for pedestrians across the road. By virtue of the fact the where the arrow is pointed to, the give way line is set back. So drivers are required to wait behind the path of pedestrians if uh, pedestrians are about to cross or are already crossing. Um, now this is tip of, typified by a continuous surfacing, footway surfacing across the side road. Here's another shot of it, so you can see it there. Um, so this is in Clapham, here's another example in Clapham, treated in a slightly different way, I would have made more of a feature of the entrance there, by getting trees in, um, there's a kind of place-making um, uh, opportunity there as well. <coughs> but this one's a bit wider, 
So you've just got to be careful that um, the trench itself lends itself to this kind of treatment. If it's too wide and you can't tighten up, maybe it won't control speed. Because the suitability really is, um, is about speed, the ability to reduce it, but really between the balance between pedestrians and um, cars. So if there's loads of cars, very few pedestrians, it might not be as suitable. And vice versa, it's going to be more suitable. So what are the alternatives? I mean, that's really about pedestrian policy. So once we bring in cyclists as well, uh, there are different ways of doing that. Um, now, this is um, a scheme that's proposed for uh, Green and Road. But here, there's a lot more width of the side of the road. So the aim is here to set the cycle path back into the side. So anyone turning in, a vehicle can stop. And there's enough length for the vehicle to stop to let the cyclists go across. So uh, you need about five metres but here, in Amsterdam, similar kind of thing, it's a bit different, but it's a similar approach, where the setback is less, about three metres. Here's another example, it's a new trail. Same thing again, the cycle path runs across the junction, there's only two metres here, but you still need that width, you need two metres plus the cycle lane, plus a footway at the back. This is back to um, asking whether we've really got less width, um, and, and this junction here, um, is, is probably whether there's more width around the side road. So um, it's probably not typical of, of the whole of Wisdom Road. Wisdom road. Um, so I think really, I mean, the, the, there is potential to do what I've, I've, I've shown in the top there, so you might want to think about that. But certainly for the other junctions, maybe for this one as well, we're probably looking at taking cyclists uh, straight across the road where the arrows um, indicate that. But that's something to think about. And taking them straight across is, is part of the plan for another part of Greenham Road where similar to those uh, designs we showed, the, the photos I showed before, Brighton and uh, Bournemouth, where it goes straight across the road, on the bottom right hand corner there. Um, here's, here, here is Brighton, just to, just to show that. And um, here's a, another scheme in Waltham Forest, um, which uh, takes it across there, you've got this continuous curve, uh, but there's also um, a continuous crossing where that car is as well. Um, so it combines both, both of those approaches. So that's the side roads. Moving on to bus stops. Um, uh, there's a typical design uh, proposed in the current designs for all bus stops, which is this um, shared use area. So it's just a block of two of those, which are the two that are closest to the Warwick Road junction. Um, so looking at one of those, um, so as I said, shared use. So here's, a, here's an image of it from um, some guidance document and so what um, is currently proposed is the cyclists come up to the shared use area, once they enter that shared use area they mix with pedestrians in whatever way they feel appropriate. And obviously there's downsides of that um, and uh, the uncertainty is, as to who has priority, if anyone has priority is one of those. Um, to, to, to achieve um, uh, that kind of situation you probably need about 4 metres minimum width. Um, so that's one approach and that's what's proposed at the moment. An alternative is bus stop bypass. Here's one in Camden. This is where the cycle path continues um, across in front of the bus stop, but between really the footway and the bus stop itself. Yeah. Um, now, again, this has its downsides. The downside here is people stop off the bus. They, there may be an issue there with cyclists um, coming straight across. So, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's issues to a certain extent in both. You probably need about 3.5 metres minimum for that one. Here's a variation on the Camden um, idea, but here there's a, there's a little giveaway line uh, on the approach to the, the bus stop to say cyclists, if pedestrians there or if you're getting off the bus, then you should give away. How effective that would be is, uh, is open to question, really. But it's another um, option. And uh, more conventional, keep them on the street, Terminate it with the bus cage, as, it, as it's called, the yellow um, hatch line, um, and um, continue them past it, which is fine. There's no buses there, and there's buses there. You see the cyclist has to divert into the path of traffic if there is traffic there into the road. Uh, <coughs> something also worth thinking about, um, it's not conventional, that's why I'm going to focus on it, but you could bring, in theory, the cycle lane to the back of the footway, basically reverse the footway and the cycle way where the bus stop is, um, there are issues with this, um, and they are that you get this potential conflict point with pedestrians and cyclists going to the bus stop, because 
Um, even if you're a pedestrian, if you're not using the bus stop, you have to go by where the bus shelter is and where, where the, the bus boarding area is to, to even go and continue on your way. And the other issue is you bring the brake close to where driveways are, um, especially the visibility from those driveways is very poor. But it is, it is another thought. Um, and then finally, uh, you've probably heard about these floating bus stops. So here's an example of it in the top right here, and here's a photo of one on the bottom right. Um, to achieve these, um, you need a minimum of 5.5 metres, so you've got this island, then the cycle lane, and then the footway. And along Kista Road, um, there's really probably only one uh, bus stop where we've got that width. We've only just got that width, um, which is this one here. Um, so, it, whether you want to try to get some consistency with the design, or whether if you have enough width, you would choose to go to this side if you prefer that design, is another um, point for debate. Again, the issue here is um, with the access to the driveways. Can you actually achieve that design at the top there if you've got driveways that you need to maintain access to? Could be, could be quite tricky. So, that's bus stops, then final crossings. So, we've got control crossings and control crossings. Uncontrolled crossings, similar to there, very simple, and um, there's different type of ways of doing it, but it's just an island in the middle of the road. And controlled crossings, we've got those for pedestrians, those for pedestrians and cyclists. So these are those just for pedestrians, and here's the different types that you can use. Puffin, which is a more modern variation of the Pelican, which actually, um, according to the regulations which changed about two weeks ago, you can't introduce those anymore. So they're effectively redundant. Um, uh, but they do exist, and, and most people are probably more familiar with those that's on the top right. Zebra crossings, and then finally countdown crossings, which are really a variation on the top two, but with a countdown signal. Very popular in lots of places, particularly in London at the moment. And then finally, uh, pedestrian cycle crossings. Uh, one on the uh, left there is a, is a shared um, parallel crossing. So you've got a, it's a zebra variation on the zebra that cyclists can use as well. That's a new regulation to enable that to be introduced. The more traditional uh, toucan crossing, um, shown on the right there. So, just a summary of where these things are. So, at the moment, we've got two control crossings. They're, uh, they're in the front lines, but they're there at the moment. They're both just uh, pelican crossings. We've got signalised crossings at either end of the section, which would have crossing points. And then we've got seven bus stops. Um, there's the width for reference, and it's that top one on the left there, which is the 5.5 metres. Um, the two on the bottom left, on the, the, this is the width, sorry, from the curb line to the back of the highway. So on the, the bottom two, the bottom left, there isn't a cycle lane, so it's just from the, it's just the width of the footway, basically. Whereas the other one's around about 4 metres. So that's it for me, thank you very much. Was there any you questions? Question yeah, that's fine. I, so I think questions now. Yeah, we so do five minutes of questions yeah. and then we'll move on to yeah, Andy. And then move on to Andy. So, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, Glenn, you talked a lot about um, buses and bus stops, smart uh, designs. Um, as context for our discussion, what's the current state of discussion about whether payment cards would be used for bus when you get on a bus versus coins? Because that would the fact that dwell time of the bus at the bus stop that may have a bearing on the design of the um, bus stop. Yeah. I've got the operator here tonight. He'll meet us. Yeah, come on, Andy. Probably best. 97% of weekly tickets are purchased on the smart account. We already have the Smart Cash Rewards Bus Ticket. We now have. Stop number one there, where there's 1.8 meters. Mm. Could you give us an indication of what the options are for that? Which is number one? Number one. Yeah. one there is no, possible. Let me just see. Yeah. So, just for context, that number one is. I think it's 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 about here. 
Yeah. So, so the footway is, is whatever it's said, 1.8, 2 metres. And, and that's where the road's really narrow. So what the current design shows, and this was part of the discussion last week, was um, it's just cycle symbols, cycle logos, just to raise awareness that cyclists will have to mix with traffic. So there's no uh, alternative within the current configuration really to, to divide, divert the monitor. Given that we are talking about bus stops this yeah. evening, there is no option as far as you're concerned. Not, not with that layout. Not with the way it's laid out at the moment. Well, that's that's kind of up for discussion. If you feel that some of the bus stops yeah. on the design aren't needed, aren't relevant, yeah. then we very much welcome that's, that that's, feedback tonight. You've got a bus stop on one side of the road, that's, and that's going out of town, mm -hmm. which yeah. I, I don't see the need for that particular bus stop. People use it to go to Huntington Road. Well, it, well it, raises, it raises a good point. And this yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So can, can, I, can I suggest, just in the interest of the time, it raises a very good point that is, um, it's not just about design, it's also location and demand. Are there? Is there demand? Is it the right location? The same relates to the crossings as well. Should there be extra crossings? Are they in the right place? Are they the type of crossings proposed the right time? So if you could you know, factor that into the discussions as well. There is actually a lay-by area right next to there that's currently used for pay and display parking, which possibly could be repurposed for a bus lay-by instead. Okay. I think that's pretty much it, Chair. I think that, that lay-by area is pretty much it. I would say, add to that, in my experience, that they're there for a reason. And if you try and take them out, you'll soon find what that reason is. But, uh, yeah, that's but a good point. But I think it's a good point to make. Bicycles, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So these are the main areas that I think we want to, to concentrate on uh, this evening uh, and to look at you know, what could be uh, interventions made uh, there. Uh, and to try and um, you know, illustrate what's been done elsewhere, where we've taken highway space away uh, and actually used it to create a better public realm, a better landscape. Uh, I've got a whole host of images there from, from around the uh, country, around the world, but to try and uh, get us going with some, some big thoughts. So here we are uh, down in London, you know, where road space was taken out, trees are planted, uh, you know, benches are put in to return this uh, and actually deliver a better pedestrian walking route through here and a cycle only connection. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, additional cycle parking, you know, and a much larger space uh, than actually the hospital here uses, they spill out onto it for their, their fare. Uh, is it about uh, space for sitting uh, and relaxing? Is it about tree planting? Can we fit those trees in uh, with the utilities we've got? Uh, this was on well, the street in London where the utilities meant you couldn't plant trees, but it was done slightly differently with larger planters, so you can still green that street, not necessarily having to dig up uh, what was uh, under the ground. Uh, or is it about uh, you know, celebrating uh, you know, small pop-up uh, events? This is actually a spur out space from a cafe over here. Uh, that they, they used when the road was narrowed uh, on this particular street uh, in order to accommodate additional seating space. Uh, or is it about uh, you know, children's play, which has been done in other schemes? Uh, or is it about uh, uh, not parking necessarily a Russian T34 tank in some of these spaces? Uh, but I used the opposite here, and uh, this bit of land has become a sort of art installation over the years because there is a tank park there, and people come and paint it different colours. and our students take photos on it and what have you. You might not want one of these, but is it something to do with art or uh, celebrating you know, things about this Park Houston Road that we're not aware of uh, would be appropriate? When we think about the design of the street, uh, you know, is it about creating a regular form? Is it a regular, perhaps, avenue of trees and lampposts that we want to create? Or is it slightly irregular? What would be appropriate? Uh, and is it about having a level surface you know, where we cross the junctions? Uh, or a more traditional curve. And to illustrate that, uh, this is uh, some work we've done on a, a new street, but here's a very regular pattern with trees planted uh, in a, a, a parallel avenue. Uh, equally, uh, it could be uh, slightly irregular, depending on how we put those elements in. So if you've got thoughts about that, we want to hear them. Is it about uh, creating uh, you know, gateways as you come in uh, at some of the key junctions? Uh, this is almost uh, a level surface, very small upstand in this scheme uh, in Poynton. Uh, the introduction of courtesy crossings, as Glenn was saying, these are more uh, certainly uncontrolled crossings, but places where you might feel safer to cross uh, uh, rather than uh, going to dedicated crossing space. Do we want to consider uh, you know, the landscaping, uh, the planting uh, adjacent to some of these spaces, and in particular the trees? Uh, you know, can we start to rethink uh, some of those urban spaces? It's happening elsewhere uh, in the country. This was uh, in Nottingham, made Marion Way, the inner city ring road, quite a busy road around the city core. Uh, this is what was built in the 60s, elevated highway with the passes and a nice shop in here. Uh, but it's been transformed into this. Uh, still carries the same amount of traffic, but just does it a lot slower. But look at all this space that actually got returned for, for, for human beings. And, cycle parking here, some of the businesses spread out here now as well, but it's all been green quite heavily with you know, semi-mature trees and actually some planting down the medium here. So is that the sort of thing that could be appropriate uh, along the road? Of course we've seen it in Birmingham as well, lots of the ring road coming down, uh, and these are now uh, tree-lined uh, major streets, uh, but you know, bus routes as well. Uh, obviously there's more space to play with here than what we've got on Houston Road. But the tree planting is, is such a key feature you know, along the edges here. And this is after you know, a few years and it started to, to mature quite nicely. They did the same in Taunton, uh, where they decided that the, the centre of the town there was quite an important place because it had the uh, war memorial. Uh, and then they thought about a different set of materials to, to reinforce that, uh, and using uh, stone sets. Uh, to allow people to, to cross because the traffic speeds are slowed down. But again, tree planting a key part of that. Uh, and right up to, uh, this is Edge Lane, Liverpool, a you know, major arterial route, uh, but uh, the use of uh, actually quite mature trees to give a, an instant effect.
effect of, of, of the tree line uh, avenue uh, along the edge uh, and at the centre. This is some of the edge details here. Uh, but you know, is this the sort of thing we want to think about where we can fit trees in? Uh, I think at this stage you know, we want to assume uh, that utilities can be managed, but clearly we can't put trees where we've got uh, you know, accesses to, to private dwellings coming out. And of course, if we're trying to accommodate bus stops and the like, you know, there needs to be uh, space for those as well. Can I ask a question there? Certainly. Can you go back one slide? Um, so what's the minimum distance between the tree trunk and, for example, where the buses would go? Because obviously if you put a mature large tree, you don't want the buses knocking out half the tree and it looks sort of half-sided. Yeah, it'll depend on the tree species. Uh, I mean, here you can see this is one about a metre. It's, it's probably safe to assume, you know, we can, we can put a reasonable sized tree in there uh, and then, you know, it'll, it'll get clipped by the buses, but that'll hold it back and it might have to be maintained as well. But I think assume that for, you know, the, the design work this, this evening. But clearly, you know, it will have to look at the types of species. There's obviously the underground element as well about how the tree, uh, sorry, the tree uh, uh, root system is contained. Um, these were done, you know, with not a system that sits under here, but actually a longitudinal system. So there's a, a root container you know, in this sort of area uh, to allow it to have the water and air that it needs to, to grow properly. Um, I know we're quite tight for space along this section of, of the corridor, but we were asked to talk a little bit about sustainable urban drainage of suds. Uh, the idea that uh, you know, some of the surface water drainage could be visible uh, within some of these spaces if we felt that was appropriate, if we felt that would be good. Uh, in, in some streets where there's plenty of space to play with, you know, these would be quite major features. Uh, clearly we haven't got that sort of space uh, to play with here. Uh, but you know, are there smaller scale uh, suds could be incorporated into some of the areas if you feel that, that should be part of the story of, of how this, you know, this road works. Uh, these are other you know, smaller ones done on a, a, a new ski, uh, only a, a metre or so wide, but enough to, you know, to, to, to tell the story that there is sustainable drainage going on in these spaces. I think there's a balance between hard and